welcome. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. So I think I'll just start right off the bat and just kind of ask you a little bit about you know your past history, and then we'll talk a little bit about your stay here, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right on. So how long were you in active addiction? Uh, I was going on about just 10 years, actually 10 years this month. It would have been about a decade. Um, I started when I was 15. I started unusually with ecstasy and marijuana and then grew into alcohol, cocaine. Um, alcohol has been an issue the entire time with me, but I kind of, I, I'm addicted to everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have that addictive personality. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> I'm addicted to food and yeah. going, working out and everything. Yeah, yeah. No matter what it is. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Whether it's cupcakes or chips or whatever, yeah. I got to watch everything I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good to be aware of that, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, can you talk a little bit about uh, what was life like in active addiction? Uh, honestly, life was really tough. Um, I was mostly self medicating because of my anxiety. Um, I don't know which came first, kind of like the chicken or the egg, but um, my anxiety was fueled by like the alcohol, and but like when I drank, it got rid of it, and then I would drink to get rid of it, and it would just bring back my anxiety even worse, and it was just a spiraling anxiety mess, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, I thought it was good times, like while I was in it, like I thought I was having the time of my life. I thought because I was like young and living life and stuff, but really I wasn't living life. I didn't remember anything. I was regretting things. I, my life was just horrible, basically. Looking back at it now. Yeah. And within that, were you be, were you able to be productive doing other things? Like, were you working? Were you, were you holding down jobs and things like that? Or? Uh, work wise, I was horrible because I was. I'm a binge drinker, so. I have this considerably good time of being sober and them seeing me sober. And um, then when I'm on my binge, then I call in sick to work and then make all these excuses and be like a super crappy worker. So like on the outside, it looked like I was like basically um, bipolar or something because I was just like bad half the time and really good the other half the time. Yeah. But I was honestly not proud of it at all. And I was able to hold down my school that I was in for the past year and just barely make it, but like kept missing so many dates. But um, I think now I'm very confident that I'll be able to give it my all in 100% and not just barely pass. Yeah, great. Yeah, live up to your true potential, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, for you, was, was there a moment where you realized, okay, this is it, I need to get help, or where you were ready? And could you talk a little bit about that moment for us? Uh, yeah, I see because I... Um, I'm always like sober for extended periods of time. I always think I got this, but really I don't have it at all because I always ha will go back to it. I always mess up, I always slip. And um, the moment I realized I needed help was um, May long weekend this year. I got so blackout drunk, I didn't know what I did for three days at my friend's house. And she said horror stories like I was calling her I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this, but the B word and yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, and I'm totally out of character. I'm not like that at all. And I respect her a lot as a human being, but I disrespected her house. I was basically sleeping in a room, drinking, hiding beers and vents and stuff. And I apparently took like 15 of her ambience, which I do not remember at all. And um, when I awoken, I was with so much guilt and remorse and shame that I knew I needed help at that point because I could have easily died. I don't know if it was like a suicide attempt or if it was just me getting messed up or something, but that's really a cry for help almost. Yeah, definitely a low, a low moment, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the people always say rock bottom has a basement, so I don't know what that would be. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want it to find out. Yeah, like, you don't want to find out. Yeah. It's pretty close to death, so. Yeah, yeah. And so how did you find I Recover Treatment Centers? Uh, it was actually just random uh, my mom had a friend who had an aunt who's staying here or something and they said oh yeah you get ipads and you get to you get to go on the internet and i mean that's not the best parts of it but like everybody the comments were flawless like everybody was saying it was like five stars and like great and like there's multiple facilities so it shows it's very like accredited and works and um, when I came here, I was just greeted with like compassion and like loyalty, and everybody was like just amazing. Oh, that's great! And, that's, and how long have you been here now? I've been here. Fif uh, I'm clean 55 days. I've been here 56. Awesome. 50. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been this sober, or I haven't been sober this long in like maybe like eight years. Okay. 
Well, yeah. congratulations, man. You've Thank done you. Some great work. And so that must mean you're in the cognitive behavioral therapy program, right? Now. Yeah. Right after the first four weeks, initially, we started with the second four weeks to the eight week. It's the eight week program, CBT, and yeah, it's the cognitive behavioral therapy. It really touched base on anxiety, depression, and like the reasons why I turned to drinking in the first place. And Honestly, that it like the twelve step program for the first four weeks is amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, but that part helped me the most is to get it to the bottom of why I was drinking in the first place. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I definitely the whole program was great for me, and and there was you know tools in all of it. But in CBT, once they started explaining it to me, I, I you know I hate to quote Oprah, but you know those, <laughs> for lack of a better expression, I had a few moments where it was like aha. I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, the lights started going on. Can you think of any times when that happened with you throughout that program? Or? Uh, well, I've been to the, doing the 12-step program kind of on and off, and like I knew deep down is what I needed is help um, with the issues that initially started me in drinking. Um, yeah. My aha moment was like hearing like it described was like it was meant for me, like saying like changing your thoughts because I overthink and my thoughts get me in trouble. So yeah. changing your thoughts changes your moods, changes your actions, and it just goes in a circle. And if you can break that cycle and you can literally become a better human being, it changes, it makes you happier overall. And yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You seem very happy. Very <laughs> Thank happy, you. Very happy person. It's great. It's, it's, it's so, you know, uh, I think for others out there, you know, inspiration to see someone, you know, doing so well. Thank you. Um, so would you have any advice for the addict who is out there right now suffering? Um, honestly, it's scary to take that step. Um, you just have to put, give it your all, just take the step and you will, won't regret it. You, everybody deserves happiness, no matter what you've done, no matter what you did. It doesn't matter, we've all been there. And when you come to iRecover, if you come to iRecover, you'll be greeted with compassion, no one will judge you, and it'll solve all your anxiety, your depression, everything that brought you to drink in the first place. Everybody deserves to be happy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, how about for the family who have a loved one that is suffering from addiction right now? Anything, anything you, might, you might be able to offer them right now? Um, for the family, um, it's time is up pretty much. Like you're there's so much love in this program that you're you're not even you're, i know it's afraid to like where to put your family member who's going through a problem but here is the place they they'll love just like you do just like families do yeah yeah we're definitely uh very family, family oriented here. Yeah. yeah yeah that's one thing i love about it i was so scared when i got here i can still remember my first night here and how terrified i was and instantly i that started to subside you know it took a little while for me to come out of my shell but exactly yeah. it took like about a week for me yeah. a couple of weeks to fully yeah. get out but everybody treats you like family here and really it's like a second home and it makes you like become the best version of yourself you could possibly be and that's all we really want, I think, all of us, right? To be that best we can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does the future hold for you? What are you thinking about? Where, 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 what are the goals? Um, well, I've had these goals for the past couple of years, even in active addiction. Um, my plan was to be, originally it was just going to be an addictions counselor, but I got accepted into psychology. I'm actually going to my right. second year. Um, I'm gonna. I'm planning on working with people ad as in, in addictions as a psychologist when I'm finished my masters. Oh, that's fantastic.